My name is Margaret Saunders. I was born Margaret Yates in Gloucester, New South Wales, and until I was seven years of age and my family came to Newcastle to live. I went to Waratah Girls School in my primary days and then on to Newcastle Girls High School uh, in Newcastle. Where we lived at Waratah, our house was in Lorna Street and uh, most times I caught the um, the tram in Bridge Street into uh, what we call the Bank Corner and we'd walk up National Park Street to, to Girls High. I went there in 1947 and in 1949 my, my dad asked me if I would, would I mind finishing school, coming home and helping mum because she wasn't well. So I did that and I enjoyed that first year home Two days of that year I went to technical school. One day I did dressmaking, the other day I did millinery, and then in the January of 1951, I contracted polio. Um, I wasn't well. My mum got the doctor to the house and he diagnosed it as being polio. I was taken off to the Waratah Infectious Disease Hospital um, they thought there that I'd been misdiagnosed. They had six or seven doctors come out to see me in the afternoon. They asked me all questions and got me to do all sorts of things, bend over, touch my toes, you know, everything that they asked me to do, I could do. One question they asked was, either of your arms or legs different to the other one? And I said no. But nine o'clock at night, I realised that in the top of my right leg, above my knee, there was a tingle that wasn't in the other leg. I told the nurse and she said, I'll just keep an eye on it and um, let me know. But anyway, it stayed there and I went off to sleep until four o'clock in the morning, the nurse came and put the torch on to me to see if I was all right. And they found that I was paralysed from the neck down and uh, they transferred me out to the uh, main ward then where there was near on 50 other patients with polio. Of course we were in the middle of a, an epidemic at that stage. I was there in the infectious disease hospital for three weeks. There was no visitors allowed. Um, there was only the nursing staff and the doctors that could see us. But after three weeks I was transferred over to the rehabilitation part which was in the same grounds as the infectious disease. Every morning we were lifted out of bed, put into swimmers and taken down to great huge big baths that were waist high uh, off the floor and the physiotherapist could bend over and move your legs and move your arms and your body in under the water. Uh, I was there for five months altogether and by that time I was able to regain my strength in my legs, my arms. I, I felt it was, I was very clever at one stage when my uh, family was there and I showed them how clever I was. I put my hands together and I lifted them gradually up high over my head. But then of course I had to hold them down and lower them gradually, otherwise they would have just dropped and pain would have occurred. Well I've, I've lived a, quite a, a normal life but with disabilities. Where that tingle was in my upper right leg that muscle died and did never come back again uh, so therefore I've had to be very careful of that right leg all these years. 2019 so it's a long time since 1951 when I had the polio. In the salt vaccine, the viruses are killed and then are injected into the body and cannot multiply after that. So that you must have the whole mass of virus to stimulate the defense mechanisms in the body. Who owns the patent on this vaccine? Well, the people, I, I would say, there is no patent. Did you pack the sun? <laughs>